She is the first returning guest of your beloved podcast. And today, she and I keynoted the Cloud Summit here in Silicon Valley with executives from PayPal, CrowdStrike, Wells Fargo, many, many more. And today, we are going to tell you everything we learned from sessions like data and AI trends that will define the next decade and how you should prepare for it, or sessions like a thousand plus cloud migrations lessons on performance security, cloud ROI. That was my favorite one, actually. You can't see her, but she's right here. And I'm going to introduce her to you in a minute. But before I do that, I want to make sure that if you're not one of the 6 million people watching this everywhere, this car cast is syndicated, you subscribe to it on YouTube down here, up here, wherever you are watching it. I'm going to put the link in comment for you because this will be the best way to be notified when the videos are up. Everything you hear about in Gen AI is about productivity. And it's absolutely true that Gen AI can be an incredible level of performance. In recent research by Boston Consulting Group, the firm found that when it comes to product innovation, with tasks like ideation, content creation, around 90% of participants did improve performance. But, but with the same research, the firm also found that when participants use Gen AI for business problem solving, they perform 23% worse than those doing the task without Gen AI. So I'm gonna put the link to the research in comments so you can take a look at it. But the bottom line here is it seems that people might mistrust the technology in areas where it actually contributes massive value and they trust it a little too much when it's completely incompetent. So think through the business use cases that your Gen AI deployments are about, don't assume and choose wisely. Now, speaking of choosing wisely, one of our panelists today from Wells Fargo talked about the use cases for Gen AI that they went through and how they chose them. If you remember a few weeks ago, I covered the story of Fargo. This is the bank, Wells Fargo's virtual assistant app handled 20 million interactions so far on track to doing 100 million this year. So we're talking about large scale. And the executive on a panel talked about how they thought about picking these use cases. They started with 700 use cases, 700 use cases. And they think about it with four types, classification, generation, information retrieval, summarization. This is a great match for the uh, McKinsey research that I talked about in the past. If you think about it, this Gen AI opportunity is worth $4 trillion. That's more than the UK's entire GDP. But there are really four areas, $4 trillion for four areas that drive 75% of value. And they are customer operations, marketing and sales, software engineering, research, and development. So again, I'll put the link down here so you can get access to this research. But that's how you're going to be able to tar target the right use cases. Now, one of the big themes you're going to hear about is multimodal and for that i need to bring my special guest here so she can come in and tell us everything about multimodal so there you go steph uh, stephanie wong you know her you followed her you look great with the glasses in fact you make me want to get the official glasses here because otherwise we'll have different glasses so <laughs> what is this multimodal thing and why does it matter all right, multimodal is important because think about text-based generative AI is going to feel like old news because multimodal allows you to provide input and get output in the form of text, video, images, code, and audio. And this is going to help you mirror human cognition, right? This is how we understand the world about us and how we reason. And there are many reasons why I think this is going to be powerful for companies and those who utilize multimodal are going to reap the most benefits out of AI. So what's, what are some examples you can think about where multimodal is useful? All right. So there's four key areas that I think multimodal enables, which is making a more robust system, allowing you to get more context, more human-like expression, and finally reasoning. So I'll give you examples of each. Robustness. Da different data types can often complement one another, right? So it can create a more robust system. So think about it, like we're sitting in an electric vehicle, you're, we're, we're thinking about autonomous driving. Autonomous cars often use different types of data input, correct? You have a camera that can understand the, its uh, landscape around it, but it might misinterpret mm -hmm. a shadow as being an obstacle. That's why we wanna also incorporate LiDAR data. And then for context, which is important for AI, Context is something that different data types can provide. If one is lacking, then the other data type will provide more context. So for an example, if you ask a system to create a story for a children's book, and it says something like, then the dog barked loudly, that could mean a lot of different things. But a model that provides images alongside will show a corgi doing it versus a German mm. shepherd, and suddenly the context completely changes. Uh, third, expression. So expression is how humans communicate. 
Multimodal AI can often provide much more powerful experiences because it can mirror human expression. So in the case of a teacher, your favorite teacher, I'm sure everybody remembers yep. one favorite teacher from their childhood. It's often because of the way that they taught based on your understanding and how you understood the world around you, as well as utilizing non-behavioral cues, the tone of how you teach things, and maybe you drawing on a whiteboard to explain something complex. So a model that can do that seamlessly across modalities is much more effective. And then finally, reasoning. You can essentially have uh, much better inferencing that happens on a very limited amount of data because it understands different modalities. So if you take the use case of a security camera system that tries to detect trespassers mm. from restricted areas, it's easy to say, hey, at face value, somebody is trespassing. But if it can understand just small different data types like the presence of a badge or maybe the way that the person is walking, it can understand, uh, hey, this person has just happened to be in the wrong place by accident. So just drawing to conclusions much more easily. So we got four types here to remember robustness, context, expression, reasoning. If you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about the ways you need to think about selecting the right Gen AI context or the right Gen AI applications. And this maps very well with the MT car model that we came up with, right? Multimodal being the first div uh, dimension, trustable being the, M the, the T and MT, contextual, you talked a lot about that, applied and recency. Look, we could be here for hours and because our, our session was actually uh, close to an hour and then we had two panels uh, following that. So I hope this was useful to you. It certainly was a ton of fun for us. Make sure to connect, comment, share, like, let us know what you'd like us to cover. Steph, thank you so much for the time today. You were great. Thank you. We will see you very soon.